Alright, welcome to the hut. So today we're making house drums. This is what they sound like. Great, yeah, you can also find this project on my Patreon. I'll put the link in the bio below. So yeah, that is the drums. Um, so yeah, these sort of drums can be used in tech house, piano house, commercial house, deep house, all of that. Uh, so first we've got the kit group. This is normally where you put the bass as well. Um, so it's quite a thumpy one, mainly because I've got this on it. And also it's quite a thumpy kick. Um, so yeah, this is just a drum bus. So you go to auto effects, drum bus, drag and drop it. Oh uh, yeah, this is actually a preset. You don't have to use that, but yeah. It's basically just adding a bit of saturation to the kick, um, making it a bit thumpier. Uh, this is the boom. You can put that in key by changing the frequency. See the bottom here. Um, it changes the, the key of the track. So if you're doing a track in like E minor, then you change it to that. Yeah, um, so that is that. Not a lot of processing there. But yeah, this kick can be changed out quite easily. Um, just drag and drop another one into this, the simpler. At the moment, I've got uh, one from the Big Z sample pack. Yeah, uh, processing, not a lot of processing, but there's an auto filter. That basically takes out the low end as the um, the loop comes to an end. This basically helps with transitions. Um, yeah, adds a bit of like ear candy sort of shit. Yeah, then we got uh, an EQ taking out a bit of the low end. This isn't the best EQ you've ever seen, but um, yeah, it's quite clicky. So I've taken out the top. Uh, I've also added this. Uh, so at one seven eight hertz, so you can add it wherever. But that's sort of where the main power of the kit was coming from, so I've added a bit of a boost to that. A bit thumpy, you can sort of lower that, yeah. Um, but then, yeah, you'd duplicate this, drag it onto the base, and then you'd drag that down so um, the frequencies aren't clashing. Yeah, so that's one trick. Then, yeah, the kick, you can basically change that however you like, depending on the track you're making. Um, then we've got the main drum. Yeah, and this works at the arrive this start. So yeah, it basically helps add more drive and energy to the track or drop that you've made. Um, so firstly, we have the clap. No process on the clap. Quite a snappy one. Um, yeah, then we've got the second clap. This just adds a bit of background noise to it. Uh, got a bit of boost on the EQ, taking about a bit of the low end. It's not really doing that much. Um, reverb, I'm not even sure that's on. I suppose you delete that. Don't want to confuse you. Then we've got this reverb. This reverb is actually doing something. Um, it's just adding a bit of like, air to it. Oh, uh, yeah, that sort of just a secondary clap to the main clap here. Um, yeah, so after claps, you've got this percussion. So sort of like, like a clap roll. So that's the MIDI. Um, so yeah, that's also from the Big Z sample pack. I have taken out a lot of the low end as I have a lot of the high end. So yeah, that sort of um, clap roll basically helps to add a nice transition into um, where it sort of picks up a bit. Yeah, so then we've got the main hat. This is a 909 open hat. So yeah, most of my tracks, I either use 909 kits or 707. So the sort of classic house kits that everyone basically uses um, since like the 90s. So yeah, everyone still uses the same drums. That's why you normally recognize it. Um, processing on that. We haven't got any processing apart from this auto filter which isn't on, so delete that. And yeah, on the simpler, I have added a bit of automation. Um, automation is a great thing to basically keep the track alive and moving. So as you can hear, it starts like this. It sort of opens up. 
Right, so what I've done is lowered the sustain all the way, kept the attack all the way down because you want it to hit on the transient. Um, I've then added a decay, oh, sorry, the decay's already on there. Then I've added automation to the decay and that sort of rises. Um, so when the decay's low, it's a shorter hit. Yeah, so that basically helps um, the track basically come alive. Um, or the drums come alive. Yeah, so automation on that. I've also done that on the kick. Um, although it's not automated, I've just lowered the decay to make it more punchy. Do it even more so. Um, so yeah, you'd want a longer decay for a tech track and for a more normal house or commercial house, then you'd want it a lot shorter. It's basically so there's more room for the bass line. Um, so, after that, we've got this hat loop. This looks like this. Yeah, so with this, I've gone here. I've learned this from Max Chapman. You go to beat mode, transients, and then you go to this, and it's facing like a, a wall. And then without it, and then you sort of lower the transients down, so it's more snappy. Um, so yeah, you sort of do that so the hats and basically the claps aren't leaking as much sound, so they're a lot tighter. Um, this basically helps with the mixing process because if all your drums are really loose um, and have really long transients then yeah it's going to sound quite messy it sort of cleans them up a bit so yeah that's that uh, no other effects on that we've got the open hat this basically just helps to fill out the drums when it's kicking up a notch um, we've also got this hat loop So yeah, I have actually cut out a bit of this. Um, it's just like a percussion hit that I didn't like. Don't think it matched the track or the drums. So yeah, I've cut that out. But yeah, in the grand scheme of things, you don't actually hear that little bit. So that's all fine. Um, yeah, no effects on that. Then we've got the shaker. Yeah, this helps to add a bit of rhythm, a bit of movement to the drums. Um, I've actually side chained this so you go up to your compressor in audio effects or you can use any compressor but yeah compressor open it up side chain go to the kick hit the kick uh, I normally use this mode uh, and then you lower the threshold you can also play around with this makes it if you like play around the ratio that is um, yeah it basically makes it tighter makes it compress quicker um, yeah you can sort of hear what setting you'd like obviously you drop it all the way down yeah so we have then got a utility that just adds a bit of width um, don't think that's doing all that much yeah no it's not really doing a lot because it's quite a wide sample as it is but yeah that just basically helps it keep the mix of the hats um, outside of the middle where the kick and bass are and basically makes the track, track sound a bit wider but yeah you normally do that sort of thing in the mixing so this is more constructing the drums so yeah we've got the ride this ride yeah you hear it adds adds it's a bit more fill like it fills up the track a lot more fills up the drums which is quite important. It also adds sort of like a warning to the listener that the um, you're in like the sort of second half of the drop. So normally a ride you wouldn't really add it in the start of the drop, but you'd add it in the second half, um, second part, so they know that the uh, drop's ending. Um, I've got a shaker, got an echo on it. Um, put it on dotted notes rather than I think normally when you drop it in it's triplets. So yeah, you just click on that, click notes. Put it 116, a uh, bit of feedback, bit of stereo delay. So yeah, echo is just a delay. Um, came with Ableton 10, quite good. It looks nice anyway. Um, yeah, so that basically just helps with that. It helps fit it out a bit. Like without it.
you wouldn't really notice it was there um, unless you also take it away. But when it is there, yeah, it just makes it sound a lot better. Um, so we got the roll. Yeah, um, on its own it doesn't sound like much, but with the drop snaps um, and claps that are already there, it just adds a bit of a bit of ghetto to the track. Yeah, on that, nothing much going on there. Just drop some samples in on here and on here. Yeah, so yeah, it's little things like that. It just adds a bit of excitement to the drums. Um, so obviously if you remove all this sort of stuff, it's just very and the listeners can get bored very quickly. So yeah, so ear candy like that, which helps add movement to the track. Yeah, um, did I go over this? I'm not sure if I went over this. I think I did. Anyway, got Crash. This is also 707. Um, so yeah, 909, 707. Most drums that you hear in house tracks are from the kit or a variation of, um, with different processing. So yeah, this has a reverb on it with a long decay time. Um, I think yeah, without that, it did, well yeah, the end of that's not very smooth. Um, so that's basically smooths out the sample a bit. Uh, I've also got this compressor, side chaining again, same as um, the, whatever it was, the fucking shaker. Yeah, so that basically sucks it in with the drums, into the rhythm of the drums. Um, without it, it sort of sits on top and it just sounds really out of place. Look. Bit much. See, it's stuff like that, um, which yeah, it really helps to glue all of the drums together. Um, yeah, so talking about gluing the drums together, let me zoom out a bit. Don't like doing this close in. We've got uh, on the drum group, we've got this bass clefts easy washout. This is brilliant. Uh, you basically download it, it's free. I'll put a link in the description. You basically grab that, show automation, and you drag it up. And I basically use that in transition, so in like a, a build up, um, or at the end of like a drop, something like that. Um, yeah, it basically adds, I'm not too sure what's going on, kind of like a bit of reverb among other things bit delay maybe yeah so we've got grain delay auto filter reverb filter delay or loads going on um, but yeah it just really helps with transition basically you move that so you're not, you're not really knowing the the uh, loop's about to end though so yeah you add that it really helps uh, you can go a bit overboard with it um, so yeah I probably wouldn't go any higher than 55 otherwise it does just a bit chaotic um, a bit messy so yeah um, use that but use it with caution we also then have same as the kick a drum bus again just a saturator without it oh wait I think I've missed that move it on um, so yeah drive bit of saturation bit of Sort of, um, I think that's saturation again, but it's saturating the high end. Um, so yeah, I think with the hats, the reason I've got a lot of hats is that a lot, most of the energy from a dance track does actually come from the hats. Um, so yeah, if you listen without, without a lot of the high frequencies, yeah, it's really not a lot of energy. Right? I mean, you can really hear the energy come through. Yeah, um, I've also got this EQ. You can take that away if you want to. Maybe a bit. Yeah, maybe best with these drums, um, with the main bulk of the drums, cut off anything below like 150. Um, sort of leave those frequencies more to the kick and the bass. And then I've got the EQ. Minus two gain, you can basically ignore that. I don't know why that's there. Just lowering the volume of it. Um, but yeah, I hope you have enjoyed the video. That is pretty much it. Yeah, follow me on my Patreon. Got a link below where you can download this project. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Bye.